Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad y'all are here. Um, I'm excited about church this morning. Uh, I usually am, um, but I just, man, I know God is just moving so much in, in, in our life as, as a church, um, uh, in our city, um, and, and I see him moving in, in the lives of others, which is uh, always exciting for me. Um, I'm excited about fall at Purpose. I think it's going to be the best fall we've ever experienced as a church, uh, and I believe that because we've had the best summer we've ever experienced as a church. Um, you know, we know God has so much for us and we're expectant, like we're believing for it. Uh, we know he wants to do the impossible in, in our lives. Um, you know, I, I, I believe he wants to bring breakthrough. He wants to bring freedom to so many lives. Uh, you know, I know he wants to bring restoration and, and, uh, do more in your life than you could ever ask or imagine. I just believe that God has more and more for all of us. Uh, so, you know, like Angel said, our fall purpose groups are kicking off this week. I'm excited about that. What a great way to get into community, like just to surround yourself with some others, uh, grow closer to God and, and, uh, and, and make some new friends. Amen. Like it's, a, it's a step out of the comfort zone. Uh, but it, it, it's a game changer. You can sign up in the foyer or online. Uh, but we're just believing that we're going to have the greatest fall ever. Um, and I'm excited this morning. We're continuing, continuing our series. Purpose happens here. Um, and, uh, you know, God's been doing the impossible uh, in our church for years. We've seen it. I mean, his hand has been on purpose. The fact that we still exist is the very hand of God because we honestly on, on paper, we shouldn't still exist, but he, he wants us here. Amen. And, and it, it's reassuring to know that God hasn't forgotten me. He, he hasn't forgotten us as a church and he has more for us because he's not finished with us yet. Um, but we just see this ripple effect of purpose happening uh, in our church, in our lives, in our city. Uh, when we operate in, in um, our God-given purpose, it just makes an impact that carries. You know, when we decide to live our lives in a way that honors God, we live out purpose and, and we become a force that cannot be stopped. Purpose happens uh, in your life and then it spreads to everyone else in your world. You know, as a church, we, we operate in our God-given purpose uh, in so many ways, you know, and, and we spread the love of Jesus throughout our city uh, through things like Serve Day, which we just had this summer, uh, Serve Saturdays, which I believe we have one this coming Saturday. Um, you probably said in the announcements. No, you did not. I was like, I was listening that time. Uh, street outreaches, which we had one this past Friday night. And, and check this out. Uh, this is a, a, an outreach where we go and we bring uh, food and feed people that are on the street. And the goal, the whole goal is to at least get one person into detox every time we go out. And, and we got a person into detox this past Friday night, which... That's what I say. We're, we're a church that goes to the dark corners of our city that maybe nobody else wants to go. Well, we go and, and you can see the fruit of that. And that's why we, we've been doing it for years now. And uh, we'll keep doing it because every person matters. Jesus, you know, he said, leave the 99 and go after the one. And so is it worth it to bring, you know, uh, a huge pot of beans and, and drinks and all that? And take, take your Friday night to serve, uh, you know, just to get one person into detox? Absolutely. Yep. A great uh, ROI, return on investment. Um, happy packs are away, you know, uh, being uh, Be the Church Sunday, which is one of my favorite things we do as a church. It's, um, you know, I don't, I've never heard of another church doing it, but I mean, what a great way to spread the love of Jesus. Say, hey, we, we actually left the 90, the 99 went out. We canceled our service and we're going out to find people that uh, need the hope of Jesus. Um, you know, be the church Sunday. Yeah. Um, Christmas mall. And then like Angel mentioned, trunk or treat. These are all like big expressions, uh, that we consistently do as a church to tell people, Hey, you matter to God. Um, you know, as we take the, the gospel to those dark corners of our city, that's how purpose happens. You know, as we let everyone we come into contact with know that they matter and they're valuable to God, purpose happens. You know, when we gather on Sundays in the presence of God, taking that time out to commit to coming to church, purpose happens. Uh, when we begin to, um, uh, when God begins just speaking into our lives uh, and leading us into his will for our lives, purpose happens. When we love uh, Jesus by loving others, purpose happens. Uh, when we have fresh new encounters with Christ uh, in our lives, in our daily lives, and, and on Sundays, purpose happens. When Jesus transforms lives, purpose happens. When we live out our faith, purpose happens. When we serve the one, 
purpose happens. You know, purpose happens here. Uh, I like to clarify this. It, it's, it's not only about Sundays. It's not like an arrogant statement like when people are driving down here, so we put that sign up. Oh, purpose happens here. Oh, I guess I'll go to this other church. I guess, I guess purpose isn't happening for me. That's not what it's about at all. It's not about this building. It's not about this, um, th- this church. Uh, it's about you. And, 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 and uh, it happens wherever you are. Purpose happens where we go, when we, when we um, point people to the name of Jesus, when we bring glory to, to the name of Jesus, when we encourage a coworker, when we just show someone some love, no strings attached, purpose happens. It happens with you because uh, the church, when, when you're not here, there's no church. It's just a building. The church is us. And that's why this is so relevant to all of our lives. It happens within you wherever you are. Uh, so if you've been a part of Purpose for any length of time, you've probably heard me tell, um, or, or if you've been a part this summer, uh, we featured my friend Charles Harper's story uh, this summer before we had Serve Day. Um, you know, but, but if you know Charles, he's one of those guys that you just want to know. Like if, you, if you've met him, you're like, I'm glad I met that guy. Um, but if you know him, he, he has all these little catchphrases that he's learned since he's been a part of Purpose. Uh, uh, one of my dad's favorites is obstacles aren't in the way, they are the way. You know, it's like, woo, that's strong. He's like preaching, laughing all the time. But, but my favorite one of his, and, and probably his favorite, and the one that he lives by, and if you've ever had a conversation with him, you've heard him say these words. What is it, Charles? Trust the process. Trust the process. Uh, So that's the title of today's message. Trust the process. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. And uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for this group of incredible people. And I pray that you'd speak through me this morning, but you would speak to all of our hearts, Father. Lord, I pray that we would have a fresh new encounter with you, Father, uh, that you would increase our trust in you, that you would help us, heal us, uh, challenge us, and change us, Lord. And I pray that we would leave here encouraged because you're not finished with us. You have more for us. And I pray Uh, just for you to move in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Trust the process. Uh, You know, we can trust the process uh, because there's there's purpose in the process. You know, God wants to speak something very significant to all of our hearts today. Uh, He's always speaking life and always speaking encouragement. Uh, He's always speaking freedom, restoration, purpose, uh, more. He's always igniting purpose within us uh, so that we carry it out to others. He's not, it's not just for us. It's to equip us to reach others. Uh, Hebrews 12 uh, points to so many others that came before us and, and, um, and lived alive with purpose says this, Hebrews 12, 1, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses um, to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily uh, trips us up, and let us run with endurance, endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Jesus initiates and perfects our faith. I think about so often how in life we're just in this process of trying to get it right, trying to perfect our faith, trying to, to, uh, to get there, you know, trusting and believing for a miracle or, or believing for breakthrough or, or believing and hoping and praying that uh, something specific is going to happen uh, or, or come to pass. You know, we spend so much time in life in process, in, in the waiting. You know, when, when Angel and I um, were expecting our first child, uh, things took a turn for the worst. Uh, ended up having to rush Angel to the hospital. And, um, you know, I, I have friends of mine that won't ride with me, like on a normal circumstance. Like uh, my friend John Dowdy, they will not ride with me because I made one crazy move in a Tesla, not yours, Sandy. Uh, we, we, we rented one in uh, North Carolina and, and I passed all these people on a bridge going about, I don't know how fast. And people were getting mad at me and, and they pulled into the same conference as me too. So you should have seen me driving fast this day. I got that girl to the hospital faster than anyone could have. Um, but you know, I'm in the waiting room, uh, you know, um, uh, feeling powerless, 
uh, feeling scared, feeling out of control. Um, you know, but while I was in agony, waiting, the waiting room, if you know me, you know I hate waiting. I can't stand it. I had to wait for uh, butter last night at the restaurant and I almost just came unglued. I had to get up and go get it myself. I said, get out of the kitchen. I was like, I need butter, okay? But while I'm in this agony of waiting, just torturous time, the process, it's underway. You know, uh, the process was healing her. And, uh, and God brought so much purpose out of that pain. You know, she was healed in the waiting. You know, and, and, and you know, we did lose that, con- that, that pregnancy, but I got to keep my girl. And, uh, and that's something I'm forever thankful for. That process was agonizing, but I'm so thankful for it. You know, we believe that God gives opportunities for purpose to happen, no matter what um, is happening in our lives every single day. So how does that happen? How does purpose happen in the process? Because we're all in process. We're always going to have a process going on. How does purpose happen in the process? So God gave me a specific word for our church this morning. Um, You know, um, uh, he gave me a specific story from the book of John that I want to share. Powerful story. uh, So much depth to it. And uh, I believe he wants to use this story to challenge us, to change us, and to help us believe that God has purpose for each and every one of us, inside of each and every one of us, and he's not finished with us. Uh, Purpose happens in the process. Uh, of our everyday lives. So John 9, 1, I want to read this story to you uh, in parts. I'm not going to read the whole thing at once, uh, but it says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, uh, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or the sins of his parents? And Jesus replied, it, it wasn't because um, of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered, this happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming uh, and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. So right away, Jesus notices this man. He sees this man and uh, this man has been in a process. He's been in in a time of waiting, waiting for a miracle. He was in desperate need of a miracle. He was in, in, in desperate need of a savior. And the disciples, they're just soaking up every moment they had with Jesus on earth. I mean, asking him 10,000 questions, just, just question after question. And, um, you know, uh, the question of the day was, why was he born blind? Was it, was it because of his sins or, or his parents' sins? And then Jesus, fully God, fully man, uh, fully connected to heaven uh, and, and with the mind of God, answers with just complete truth and clarity. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. I mean, what a statement, what a perspective, what a, what a shift, what a, a powerful answer to this question. You know, this, these words of Jesus are so life-giving and, and his answers are never what we would expect. It's always like, okay, I didn't see that coming. Uh, but there's no judgment, there's no casting blame. Jesus is saying, this happened so purpose could happen. You know, it's all for the glory of God. Our struggles, our, our, our challenges, our hardships, our pain, uh, the issues, our suffering, it's all so that God can be uh, magnified. Amen? So that purpose can happen. It's all so purpose can happen. In our dar- darkest circumstances, God draws out purpose and, and desires uh, to see purpose happens. So what, hap- what has happened in your life uh, so that God can be glorified? You know, what are, the, what are the issues or problems or tragedies or hardships that, that they, they, they're to bring glory to God? You know, afflictions, you know. Uh, I was born with ADD. Angel, like, told me, well, we started doing something as a staff, like, uh, giving feedback. And, and uh, like, so on Tuesdays, we do feedback. And, and she's like, why do you move your legs so much? It looks like you have to go to the bathroom, you know? <laughs> And I was like, well, I don't, I got ADD, you know, and I'm just like trying to stay still. And so, um, you know, but why was I born with ADD? Glorified, because I keep my focus on a Sunday and I can figure out how to navigate my distractions and make y'all laugh at me to keep you engaged. You know, it's also God can be glorified. Amen. Uh, you know, what is currently happening in your life that even in the middle of your struggle, you can see the hand of God helping you and, and, and strengthening you. You know, if our greatest purpose on this life, 
on this earth is, is in life to, to bring glory to God, then I believe uh, he's going to do some things to ignite purpose. You know, he'll answer prayers. He'll heal us. He'll set us free. He'll save. He'll, he'll restore. He'll redeem. But he wants to move in your life. And he, de he, he desires for us to respond with honor and with praise. Every time we uh, respond with praise, purpose happens. Every time we respond with faith, even our, in our struggle, purpose happens. You know, we all want the miracle, but we struggle with the process, right? Oh, Lord, give me the breakthrough. Well, you're going to have to go through some things to get to the breakthrough. We don't like that. You know, we wrestle with the process. Every miracle begins with a problem. It begins with a struggle. The desperation for a miracle starts with difficulties. You know, it begins with a circumstance that just, it's just too much for us. I just can't handle it. You know, sometimes, um, uh, you know, sorry, I'm gonna blame it on my ADD. Yeah, yeah, just something that we can't fix or figure out. Sorry, that was no big words. I just couldn't do it. I don't know what happened. Um, but, you know, we, we believe for these miracles. That every miracle starts with a problem and it starts with an issue. It, it starts with something we can't fix or figure out. So how do we find purpose in the process or how does purpose happen in the process? Well, purpose happens in the process when our faith is active. So John 9, 6, I want to continue reading. Uh, John 9, 6 says, uh, Then he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, Go and wash your, yourself in the pool of Shalom. Uh, so the man went and washed and came back seeing. He could see. Um, you know, his neighbors and, and others who knew him as the blind beggar asked each other, Isn't that the man who used to sit and beg? Uh, some said he was, and some said, uh, nah, he just looks like him. And the man's like, he's like, no, no, yes, I am the one. It is me. Can't you see? Um, you know, they asked, uh, who healed you? What happened? He told them, the man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes and told me, go and to the pool of Shalom and wash yourself. So I went and washed, and now I could see. He was blind, and now he could see. You know, when we have complete trust and confidence in God and his plans, purpose happens. You know, Jesus is, is stirring purpose in this man's life, and he doesn't even know it yet. You know, right before Jesus spits and, uh, and begins his miracle, uh, he tells his, his disciples, hey, while I'm on this earth, I'm the light of the world. And, uh, and then he proves it again and again in this moment and so many other times in his ministry. You know, it seems like there's a few missing details in this story that we just don't know, but we can assume that Jesus said some words. They had some dialogue before um, he spits. You know, there, there must have been some kind of exchange between uh, Jesus and the man. It's, I didn't come up with it. It's Jesus, you know? Yeah, I think a big miracle is that he had that much spit to make mud, you know? He must have been eating some Cajun food or something. But there had to be some kind of exchange between these men because we read through the Gospels, anytime a miracle happens, it's, it's, it's initiated by that person's faith, by them believing. And so there had to be a moment where this man's faith was activated and was active. You know, Jesus does the impossible, you know, and, and, um, and his life is now filled with so much purpose. You know, purpose happens here in our lives when we have faith. We have to have faith. You know, our faith will become more and more alive and, and active when we... Um, when we are uh, striving to honor God with our lives. You're striving to be doers of the word of God and not just hearers of the word of God. I know a lot of people that can quote a lot of scriptures, but they would have to do it for you to see it in their lives. You, we have to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word, striving to look more and more like Jesus. You know, so what is it that you're praying and believing for? Like in your life, what is it that you're praying and believing for? You know, in the process, what is your level of faith? So if you're believing for a miracle, what is your level of faith in the process of believing for that miracle? You know, let's ask God to stir and increase our faith today and believe for the impossible. He's a big God. He's a powerful God. Let's believe for the impossible and let's believe that God has purpose even in the process, even in the waiting. Amen.
Purpose happens in the process when we uh, quickly carry the tasks the Lord has for us. In John 9, 4, it says, we must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent us. You know, this is all about purpose, all about purpose. You know, uh, we're God's masterpiece, created anew uh, to do good things that he planned for us long ago. And, and so it says, yeah, we must carry out the task assigned to us quickly, quickly. You know, uh, learn the lesson quickly. You know, delayed obedience is, is disobedience. And I've seen this happen so many times in my life that the, the process is prolonged because I'm kind of slow in my obedience to God. I've, I've, I've been delayed in my, my obedience. And so the process takes longer. Um, you know, when we're delayed in our surrender to him, it just, it, it can last longer. Amen. Have you ever noticed that in life? I've been delayed in my obedience before and, and, and I paid a steep price for that. I still know the price I paid and it's, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard pill to swallow uh, because you know it, it, it was my fault. It was my uh, distrust in him that, that caused that. You know, Jesus says quickly, quickly carry out the purpose assigned to us. Uh, I love Acts 20, 24. I didn't give this to, to Sandy. It says, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. Uh, the work of telling others the good news about his wonderful grace. Amen. You know, purpose happens in the process when we allow uh, the Lord to have his way in our lives. So this man in John 9, uh, don't even know his name, uh, but, but he was noticed by the savior of the world. You know, and, and he didn't have to stand there. He didn't have to interact with Jesus. He could have said, hey, get away, leave me alone. Quit bothering me. This cup has put money in, not for you to talk to me. Like, get away from me. But he stayed. He stayed and he allowed God to stir his belief for healing. And, and something within him just allowed God to have his way in his life. You know, Psalms 37, 5 says, commit your ways to the Lord. Trust him and, um, and he will do this. When we make a daily choice, to allow God to have his way in our lives, um, you know, we begin to see purpose happen throughout our lives. You know, God, have your way. Lord, have your way in this situation. Have your way in this relationship. Have your way in, in, in this decision, in, in my thoughts. Have your way with my attitude. Have your uh, way in my words and in my actions. Lord, have your way. Allow God to have his way in your life. Amen. Uh, purpose happens in the process when we settle on the fact uh, that we don't have all the answers. We'll never have all the answers, and that's okay. It's okay not to have the answers. In fact, I believe it's countercultural. You know, the life of Christ, living for Jesus, is countercultural. It's countercultural to be able to say, I, I don't have to have all the answers. It goes against the current culture to be okay with that. You know, John 9, we see uh, that the people wanted answers. The Pharisees wanted answers. We need some answers, uh, some of our questions answered. John 9, 24 says, uh, for the second time they called the man who had been blind and told him, God should get the glory for this because we know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And the man responds, I don't know if he's a sinner, uh, but I know this, I was blind and now I can see. I do know that. Uh, but what did he do? They asked him, how did he heal you? Look, the man exclaimed, I told you once, didn't you listen? Uh, why do you want to hear it again? You know, do you want to become one of his disciples too? He got cocky, you know, they cursed him. They cussed him out. They cursed him and, and said, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. You know, we know uh, God spoke to Moses, but, but we don't even know where this man came from. And the guy, he's still feeling himself. He says, uh, why, that's very strange. The man replied, he healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from? We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one has ever been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. And the, man, the men, like, they, don't know, they don't know what to say. They, you were born a, a total sinner, they answered. Are you trying to teach us? And then they kicked him out of church. Get out of here, you know? I love how um, the one who's, who's uh, been healed isn't worried about having all the answers to the miracle. He's just thankful to be healed. He's thankful to be able to see. 
You know, he, he just uh, made the best and correct assumption that whoever healed him has to be from God. You know, he's not like, he's like, I, I don't really care. All I know is I was blind and now I can see, and uh, I can see God did a miracle in my life. You know, trying to figure it all out can be all consuming. It can hinder us in our, in our spiritual journey. It can hinder us in our faith and in our walk with God. Uh, so many of us spend so much time trying to get all the answers, trying to understand it all before we'll surrender to Jesus. It's like that statement like, oh, when I die, I'm going to have some questions for Jesus. No, you're not. No, you're going to be so just uh, amazed at his glory. You know, but our, our information society, it presents a challenge to us in our faith journey. You know, uh, we feel entitled to have all the answers and all the information. I'm old enough to remember what it's like to wonder about something, wonder what something is, what it looks like. I remember what it was like to wonder. You know, there was a time where we had to go to the library. You had to go to the library. Or if you were privileged, you had uh, an, a set of encyclopedias at your house. You know, uh, at our house, um, uh, we had those Blue World books. But they, do y'all remember the, um, the Encyclopedia Britannica commercials? The, the kid's like asking his mom a question. He's like, look it up, dear. Hey, mom, where do babies come from? Look it up, dear. Which we would never say to our kids to Google, right? <laughs> Google it. Nope. You know, this entitled attitude or perspective, it makes faith a challenge for us. You know, and since, there, and since there's so much mystery to the things of God, it's the mystery of faith. Amen. If we were in a Catholic church, it would sound like this. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Oh, man. I've always wanted to do that. My, I had a buddy of mine. He grew up Catholic, and he would always do that at lunch. He would just holler it out at the cafeteria. It's like, you're an idiot, man. His ways are higher than our ways. His ways are higher. We, we want a step-by-step -step plan. You know, what, what's his plan? What's he going to do? I need to know every step. You know, and since we don't have all the details of his plan, we just stay broken. We just stay hurting. We stay in our mess because he hasn't laid out his five-year plan for us. So because we can't trust him, because we don't have all the details, we stay broken. We, we stay in pain. Proverbs 20, 24 says, the Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? You know, what if we realize we're just blind and uh, we just followed Jesus? You know, the man um, uh, was questioned by the religious leaders and, and demanded them to tell him, hey, what happened? And he told them, uh, the man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes. So this was a part of the story that was like this fresh revelation for me as I was studying. Have you ever like just noticed a small minor detail while you're stud studying the word of God? And you're like, okay, there's, some, there's a deeper meaning here. There's something more here. Um, you know, there was this one detail in the story that really caught me and got me thinking. Uh, this man said, Jesus made mud. He made mud. I, I, I looked at probably 20, 30 different translations, in, and none of them does it say he spit in the, mud, in the dirt to make mud. He doesn't say that. He was blind. He just saw mud, you know? And, and I thought about uh, that, and, um, you know, right here I have some mud. It's some mud, and y'all know nothing about the process that it took to make this mud. You don't know where the liquid came from. You don't know where the dirt came from. Uh, there was a process to this. I, I had the idea of, uh, you know, where I can get some nice dirt is an ant pile. Well, there was ants in that ant pile. I had to get the ants out of that dirt. So there was a process and it seemed foolish, but like I'm the type, once I get, I can't give up until I figure it out. So laid it out on a concrete table. Ants got hot. They left and I was left with this mud. You don't know what this liquid is though. You don't know what this is. I could have gotten toilet water. Uh, it could be clean water. It could be leftover coffee water. I mean, we don't know what this water was. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. This man was blind. All he knew was Jesus rubbed mud in his eyes. He didn't know it was spit mud. He was blind. He couldn't see how the mud was made. He just trusted Jesus. He trusted the process. And look at the outcome. I mean, if you, could imagine, if you could see the process to get where you want to go, a lot of us would say no. We would say no. I'm not going through that. You know, if you knew um, that in order to get where you wanted to be, you were going to experience, you know, this loss, this betrayal, 
uh, this season of lack, this disappointment, this roller coaster of emotions. Uh, you're going to lose this friendship. You're going to go through the heartbreak of breakup. And if we knew the suffering along the road to our purpose, many of us would just tap out. You know, but God is saying, just have faith and allow me to work in your life. I'm doing something new. I'm preparing you for more. Uh, I'm doing something new. Don't you see it? I got new wine skins. You know, I, uh, so many of us, um, uh, we, we desire new things, but we're unwilling to go through the process. God's like, hey, you're going to have to go through some things. You know, you have to go through some things uh, that you don't necessarily want to go through to get where you want to go. You got to trust me. You know, there are good things that the Lord wants to do in our lives, uh, but we have to activate our faith. Uh, well, that doesn't make sense, but I trust you. You know, like, like I don't know why these things are happening this way, Lord, but, but I trust you. you know, why does it have to be so hard? But I trust you. Wait a minute. Where did you get that mud? Yep. Don't, don't tell me. I trust you. I don't want to know. No one in their right mind would let someone rub spit mud in their eyes right? No one would let them do that. You know, but when you're blind, you just allow the one you trust to guide you. When you're blind, you just allow the one you're, you're entrusting your, your life to, to just guide. I can't see. And, and you know, while nobody in this room is, is physically blind, uh, but how many of us would agree there's some things we can't see? So many times in life, some of us can't see ourselves ever being free. Some of us can't see ourselves ever having peace. If you battle with anxiety, some of us can't see our, our marriages ever being healed. If it's been a rough journey, I just can't see it. You know, some of us can't see ourselves ever having joy. Some of us can't uh, see how redemption could ever happen. Some of us can't see how things could ever get better. You know, let's come to grips with the fact that it's actually a great thing that we can't see it all uh, and that we don't have to have all the answers. We get to trust our Savior. Amen. Amen. Y'all get anything out of this? Yeah. Purpose happens in the process when we acknowledge the results. You know, it's mind-blowing to me that these religious leaders, they're only worried about uh, who healed this man. Uh, they just experienced one of the greatest miracles ever, ever done. You know, no one has ever opened the eyes of someone born blind, but they can't even celebrate with him. They can't even acknowledge the results of the miracle. They're more worried about their title and their position than they're worried about the people. Like, hold on, someone more powerful than us? This can't be. This can't be God because we're the mans. The mans. We're the men. You know, uh, you know, he experienced one of the greatest miracles in history and they can't even celebrate. They're just so worried. You know, imagine if the religious leaders would have embraced Jesus. Like for a minute, I've never thought about that till I was studying for this. Imagine if they would have embraced Jesus. They would have been in so many steps ahead. They would have had such an advantage over everyone. Imagine the books they would have, would have written if they would have embraced Jesus. Oh, they missed out on so much. But it's no different. The religious still miss out on so much. So they're so worried about the law. They're so worried about uh, theology and all this. They forget about the people. And they miss out on so much. Amen. Oh, okay. The slow clap. That was like an 80s slow clap. The 80s slow clap is powerful. You know, celebrating others is huge. The life of Christ is being all about others. Jesus didn't have to die for us. He didn't have to go and, and spend his time with sinners and, 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 and people that were rejects of society. He didn't have to spend time with, uh, you know, beggars and all that stuff. Jesus was all about others. You know, praising God for the miracles um, that he does around us in other people's lives is huge. Celebrating others is so important. You know, it's always about Jesus and always about others. We celebrate others, uh, or when we celebrate others, it just stirs our faith. It helps our faith so much. When we acknowledge, oh my gosh, you were blind. I, dude, I gave you money yesterday. That was it, because you can see now. But man, praise God. And then as you acknowledge that faith and acknowledge that miracle, your faith grows because you have acknowledged the move of God and the work of God. Purpose happens. Purpose happens in the process when we ignore the haters and keep our eyes on the Savior. Everybody say, ignore the haters. 
John 9, 35 says, when Jesus heard what had happened, uh, he found a man and found the man and asked, do you believe in the son of man? The man answered, who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. He said, you have seen him, Jesus said, and, and he's speaking to you. And he says right away, yes, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. Life is hard. Life is so hard. Circumstances can be so challenging. Uh, people are extremely complicated. Many of us face things that we never thought we would in life. It's important that we live our lives uh, or live out our faith and we ignore negative voices and never stop following Jesus. The enemy uses people to, to tear us down, to, to distract us, to, to divert us from living the life that Jesus has for us. We have to learn to shut out those negative voices. I used to uh, pride myself on uh, when someone would say, well, I blocked them on my phone. I was like, I literally never blocked someone on my phone. I blocked somebody last night because they were a negative voice. They were stealing my joy, stealing my peace. You're at church this morning, but I blocked you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, haters are going to come after you because the enemy is here to steal, kill, and destroy. And he is active and he uses negative people. It can be family members. It can be, and I'm not saying to cut them off and never speak to them, but you have to have a boundary there to say, hey, you're not a voice that speaks into my soul. You don't have that, that, that privilege of speaking to, like you, you can have your opinion, but you have that over there. It, it's not welcome here because I have a purpose. God loves me and, and purpose is going to happen within my life because I'm submitted to him and I'm listening to him and I trust him. I don't know where the water came from that made the mud. Surely it's not spit, but I trust him. I trust him. Keep our eyes on Jesus. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We got to follow him and allow him to have his way in our lives. It's not all gonna be rainbows and butterflies and unicorns. Sometimes we go through challenges. I go through challenges. I go through things that I wish I, wish I wasn't going through. But you know what? I trust Jesus. And some of the hardest things that we've walked through in the past few months, I know that God is gonna use it for a greater cause. And that's what I do. I just keep my eyes on Jesus and keep my eyes on the bigger picture and know that God's gonna use every bit of it for his glory, which is why I'm on this earth and why you are on this earth to bring glory to God. Hebrews 12, uh, two, I read part of it, uh, but I wanna read the rest of it. Uh, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now he's seated in place, in a place of honor beside God's, besides God's throne. He died for us and he loves us so much. He paid a dear price so that we could uh, have peace and so we could uh, live a life that's fulfilled, a life of, of purpose, a life of cause so that we can make a difference in other people's lives. I am so thankful to be on this side of things. You know, I, I was on the other side, but now I'm, I'm living for Jesus. I'm so thankful that I live for Jesus because my eternity is with him in heaven. But that's not just to benefit me. That is to benefit everyone around me. Purpose happens when I'm not just living for myself, but I'm living for others. And I'm willing to say no to some things for others. And I'm willing to say yes to some things for others. It's all about others. And I believe purpose happens when we trust the process and allow God to have his way in our lives. Amen. Let's all stand up. I want to pray for you. Father, we love you so much. And I thank you for every man and woman in this room. God, I thank you that you're not finished with us, that you have more for us, Lord, that you have a, a plan and a purpose for every single one of us, Jesus. Father, and I pray that you would build our faith to a place where we trust you. We're okay. Get us to a place where we are truly okay. We got some unanswered questions. There's some things that just, that doesn't make sense to me, but I trust you anyway. God, bring us to that place of faith that we can settle, that we're not gonna get all the answers and help us to be okay with that. We can be okay with that when we trust you, Lord. Help us to trust you and have all of our faith in you. Father, I pray that you'd build our faith, help our faith, help us to have it fresh new encounters with you 
reveal yourself to every single one of us. If somebody in this room is having a battle with their faith, they're having a struggle with belief, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them today, this week, Lord, that you would reveal yourself in an undeniable way. You open the eyes of that blind man. He couldn't deny that you were God. Help those that are struggling with faith to have an undeniable experience of your goodness. And help, us, help them to recognize the miracle. Father, we love you so much and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you're here this morning, you've never said yes to Jesus or you need to recommit your heart to Christ. You kind of you said yes, but then you kind of got distracted. You let a negative voice come in and they distracted you and you need a, a fresh start with Jesus this morning. I want to give you an opportunity to pray with me, but I want to make it clear, this pr- repeating this prayer isn't the game changer. Kind of like Matt said last, last week, it's not a box you can just check and you're good. It's a heartfelt decision to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, to trust Him with your now with your, and with your uh, future. So I want to lead you in prayer. Let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. You paid the price for my sin. Give me a fresh start. Give me a new beginning. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I trust you with my life. And I trust you in the process. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, y'all give God a hand clap. But hey, we love y'all so much. Let's worship.